All right. Well, welcome, 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 everybody. It is time for episode 27 of the podcast, Unlimited Wisdom with Robert Hollis. I'm Craig A. Jackman, along with Matt Hollis, and we are so Yo. very, very glad to have all of you with us today. And, you know, we started something on our last podcast called What's New? And it was so good that we just decided we wanted to continue. So today's title, What's New? Part Two, or Part Deux. <laughs> Some of the, uh, the videos or the movies that are out there like to use. Uh, so gentlemen, let's get started. Matt, Robert, welcome. Great to see you, gentlemen. Great to see you guys, too. I was going to say there's also the, the Too Fast, Too Furious titles, right? Oh, that's put, right. Like, the two in two, two, two. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Nice, too fast, nice, too fast. Nice, nice. Well, I know that the Joker <laughs> just came out with Folle a deux for being part two. Yeah, I hear it's Folle a poo, you know. Yeah, yeah. I've kind of heard that as well. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it. I like the first one, but I've only I, seen I, it one time. I, so I've seen it. I've seen something posted. I just watched it on my on my air flight back from uh, Amsterdam. To Minneapolis on my way back the, home from Billings. The, the Joker, the first one or the second one? The first one. Okay, that's <clears throat> good. Yeah, for me, a, a, the kind of movies that I love is is something when I get done watching it, I feel like I can conquer the world, and uh, instead of just give up. <laughs> Although what do you mean? If, he conquered, no, I'm just kidding. Although I will say, and I don't mean to be a downer on that one, but I mean it was a good movie overall. If you just take the movie itself. Not quite what the Batman Joker was. This is kind of a, at least the way he was created. This was quite a, a different take sort of on like the, the whole. Sort of thing. like the Dark Knight. You know, a lot I, of I didn't, yeah, yeah, I didn't watch uh, yeah. the sequel, but believe it or not, um, I've heard some things about it, not to spoil it for anybody here, but apparently he's not the Joker. So, oh, yeah. well, I knew that in the first movie. Right. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, a lot of some of the, the fact that person, it's a social. Yeah, he's just ahead. a person that everyone said, hey, you know, this guy's a Joker. He never said he was a Joker. No, well, the he fact does, that though. people associate people it with the makeup him as the Joker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I guess what? Lady Gaga is supposed to be Harley Quinn, but. You guys are talking about know. stuff I don't even know. I'm like, I, uh, this movie's getting more talking time than necessary. I guess so. This well, is not yeah, that's true. This what's is next. what's new. So maybe more we should just go ahead and time than air time. So, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 there was something that I want to bring up to you guys that I think is pretty interesting when you ask if something's new, you know, what's new in the world is, you know, whether just like we ended up doing, whether someone talks about, you know, something good or something bad. Uh, I've been, I've been basically um, found guilty as charged and basically indicted my entire life as being someone that had rose colored glasses on and seen everything in a positive light. And I tell people, ah, that wasn't me. That wasn't me before I went to prison. It was me when I got out of prison. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like obviously you have different things in your life that like change your perspective up quite a bit. And yeah. I, I that's one of those things that like I think a lot of people don't realize is like they'll take their own personal experience and they'll put it on other people and go, I don't understand why you're complaining or I don't understand this or that. When like the reality is, is that we all have had different experiences. So yeah. like I've heard you dad say like, listen, just getting up in the morning and not being in a cell is like a good day for me. Yeah, I've never reference. been close to that. So it's yeah. like, for me, <clears throat> well, I'm for like. You, for you, every day that you wake up and you're not in your room here in my house, it could be. <laughs> no, I like living there. <laughs> hey, it, it's interpretation on what's a sale. Right. But no, the reason I brought that up is, is uh, I know that I attract and constantly bring into me, you know, uh, just positive things that are happening. I, I watch, I watch a, a a little bit of a podcast and then ended up watching all of it of, um, you know, Tucker Carlson with Elon Musk. You know what I mean? And uh, it is funny that he, the way he answered questions and some things that he said was way different than him being interviewed by Joe Rogan. And that's what got me on this concept of, <clears throat> you know, what's new 
uh, whether whether it's something negative or bad, because someone could say, you know, well, what's new? And it's like, uh, not nah, depending on the poll, there's people out there right now that say Donald Trump is going to win this election. That's what's new. And people are like, I don't like that new. <laughs> Well, and it, it, it is your perspective, I think. And uh, yeah, I don't trust. I haven't trusted the polls since Hillary lost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I, yeah, so, I remember I, I I was like, oh, no, the polls show this or oh, that. Matt, or whatever, was beat, right? Regardless. Matt was beating the crap out of me. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> I still went and voted. I listened to that for 60 days. It was like, oh, my God. Just, all right. Whatever. Whatever. Well, and what's. <laughs> What's interesting about that is how uh, the news channels have made big deals about these polls. And honestly, we don't know what's going to happen. Yes, there are tendencies. Absolutely. In, yeah. in, in a lot of things, there are tendencies. But is it an absolute? No. Even with the margin of error. I think I remember, uh, what was it, the McGovern election? Oh, yeah. I forget who it was with. It was like back in the 70s. And, and I'm like, just talking... What? history here yeah i know how old are we now <laughs> but i mean he was supposed to be the neck and neck for Matt, you know it's like yeah. like you either have to go further back or further forward that um there's a blind spot there for me <laughs> 1940s 1950s you got me you go yeah. a little in between that i'm not i'm not an 80s kid so but i think but like, in that election they were they were saying that it was going to be close and then I think it was I think it was the Nixon election. Forgive me if I um, if I'm wrong, but I do remember that it was supposed to be close, but it was so just different. In other words, whoever what the winner was won by almost a landslide. I think uh, mm. McGovern only took two states, if that, in the electoral. You're college. talking about Ronald Reagan. Is that what it was? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it could have been. I didn't Google it or anything. But oh, I, I thought you maybe Googled it, but yeah, it was some, no, somewhere I, back I in that area. That Ronald Reagan just destroyed somebody uh, in the Electoral College. He basically got like everything. Yeah. I'll, I'll look it up, but you guys keep talking. Cool. But no, but, what's new? What's new is I, I, you know, I, I, the reason that we just brought up what we just brought up is again realizing how fast whatever environment you're in sort of shapes your perspective on what's new and what you're excited about or what's new and how awful it is, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that people don't even realize how fast we think about something and then how fast we forget it. You know, we always hear about this thing called a news cycle. So one of the things that I brought up <clears throat> in previous Zooms was um, I I'm really, really happy and grateful that uh, the media decided to make a big deal out of uh, uh, someone catching a rocket in the air. You know what I mean? Because they the media hasn't been, you know, very kind to Elon Musk. And I think they know it's more like about, you know, all the brilliant minds that he was able to get to work for Tesla. I mean, for SpaceX. But bottom line, I heard the best phrase that I heard. He goes, wow, this guy said, I just seen science fiction turn to science fact. And a guy went, what are you talking about? And he goes, do you know how many movies and books and stories are out there about a rocket landing? But it hasn't. <laughs> he goes, he goes uh, hey, airplanes land themselves. They take off and land. Rockets take off. <laughs> well, too, you have to, yeah, you have to factor in the, the fact as well that like, he he's taken the time to exponentially like build this supercomputer very quickly. And I think as he did like the whole event with all the robo taxis and everything like that, I firmly believe that you're going to see exponential growth in that side simply for yeah. the fact that like he's got that tool at his disposal now, even when it does come to like those rockets and everything like that, just for the simple fact that AI can run so many simulations. If you have it trained and it's intelligent enough, like, it, you're going to be able and, to, and, to and find fast, out things you didn't before. And so. how fast is gathering data in real time? You know what I mean? Right. So, you know, when you think about as something's coming down and it's tilting sideways or whatever, and then just slow down like that when it touched. Um, the reason that I even brought that up is because Elon Musk said something in that interview 
that I thought was really, really powerful is he was saying, you know, that he used to look at future, especially with AI and certain things as being very dark. And, and he goes, <clears throat> how I was able to change my perspective and my attitude is very simple. I ask myself, he says, I always ask myself random questions and that allows me to get centered. And he goes, so I ask myself, would I rather be alive while all this is happening <laughs> so that I could observe it or whether it's good or bad, would I rather not be here? And he goes, my mind goes, I'm excited. <laughs> I want to see what's going on. And he goes, I even want to see humanity and people adjust to whether it's doing something or bad, because that's what he said. You know, there's a lot of people out there that have perceptions about stuff that are just not the right perceptions. And I thought, wow, you know, we're going to talk about what's new, you know, in our lives. And it's like, I guarantee you that we could find someone to put on this podcast where they would tell you, I'll tell you what's new. Uh, everything's gone. <laughs> well, I think it's, again, it goes back to the perspective of yeah. the individual. In other words, what's going in our, into our eyes, into our minds. And that is what is new. I mean, what's new yesterday, the day before uh, are, are totally different than what's new today, tomorrow next week. I mean, we don't know where we're going to be at. We don't know how we're going to respond, but the only thing, and I know that we've brought this up in the past here on the podcast is, okay, what is today and how we respond today may affect and will affect what tomorrow is, but how do we take those, what we respond to tomorrow? It's from our experiences of yesterday and yeah. putting the collective experiences of yesterday into how we react today for tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, see, like I'm not a. I was gonna say I'm not a, like a a believer or anything, but there's that one saying like God laughs when you make plans or something yeah. along those lines. <laughs> um, I I feel like I've learned enough at this point, at least in the current timeline that we're in, that making plans, especially at this point, six to twelve months out, is probably you're probably going to be wrong at least like fifty percent of the time at this point, if I, not more. I, I, I would um, I would say. Other than a person saying, I will be exactly where I am right now doing what I am right now. You know, there's going to be a group of people that have the ability to pull that off, maybe without them realizing it, but that's their imagination, right? <clears throat> and then you got the people like we talked about that they really, truly believe in their hearts of hearts that things are going to get worse every single day, every single year. And damn it, if those people don't pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. and then what's new for me is this this little bit of heightened awareness, Matt. I don't think I would have it if it wasn't for you. And and doing these podcasts is is um you know the the thing I ex I'm excited to hearing is is just the geometric progression and how fast AI was go supposed to grow that I I heard it the other day and it was on news that wow, we were, we right now we're 15 years off on every projection that we had that, you know, all the experts said, you know, wow, you know, maybe, maybe about, you know, 35, 40, 19, you know, 2040, we're going to have this thing. And now it's gone as far out as like 2066. Like I've yeah. heard for a AGI, which it sounds like that would just be like a, idiotic statement nowadays yeah. to say so i would what, say what, what, what is the newest yeah. that you've heard as far as uh you know some things happening i mean uh, the the interesting thing about it is is like we're we're kind of in um we're kind of in the end game point right it's kind of interesting how you can have multiple different uh companies going at the same thing and then it just slowly you could have a hundred competitors it's like the olympics or anything right you can have a hundred competitors and then as it gets closer and closer it gets narrower and narrower right and then before right. you know it you kind of just have like a couple of people that are really really competing um for what's next so you know they're starting to deliver the blackwell stuff to 
some of these people and, and everything like that. So then you'll have the next set of training data as far as these AIs go. I, for the first time, like really, really kind of leaned on this week trying to train my own AI for what we're doing in trade stars. Right. And I, I've, worked with it in so many different areas but this this is the first time where i've used it as like a tutor or an educator or a teacher and it's for others and it's blowing me away like consistently yes. like yeah. what's so insane about it is not only how fast it consumes <clears throat> information but how accurate it can be based off of that information and to see it be able to be as patient as it is like that's one of the big breakthroughs that will happen next is i not never just the thought about that it it doesn't care. It, it go, please, Matt, finish that. No, it's like it, it's it's the future of the way that like <clears throat> my kids will learn and other children will learn in the future and stuff. It, it doesn't be, get pissed off because you're not getting it right. It can teach at your level, and and the more it becomes more of like an agent, which is like a term for like, um, you could call it a friend, you could call it an assistant, right? There's different words for it, but basically, it just knows you more than anyone else right like it's refined for you it's no different than an algorithm on a facebook page or anything like that except mm -hmm. you know it's got mm -hmm. large a large learning model that's capable of doing this yeah. and you're the the language that it's learning right so matt, matt not to interrupt you but you'll no, go ahead this statement so today when i came in my office and turned on my computer every once in a while i just shut it down and reboot it and it came up and said, there's a new uh, uh, install for chat GPT. Right. And so I clicked on it and it opened up and it just had a blank screen, you know, so I had a bunch of stuff there previous. So mm -hmm. I just put in there and I said, wow, a new install. What's new with you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and because you've been telling me to lean into this, even though I, I have yeah. it. You know, and it said not much. I, I, I not much has changed with me. I still am helping a wide range of topics, and I just feel like I'm getting better every day. How about you? Anything new, exciting on your end? And I was oh like, "Oh my gosh!" I, and I was like, "Wow!" And I said, "Yes, very exciting, very exciting things going on." Thank you. And it says, "That's awesome. What's going on? Uh, what are you so excited about? I'd love to hear it." And then I put. I, I sorry, I don't have time right now, but maybe maybe later. Have a great day. No problem at all. Have a great day and feel free to share me share with me whatever you have time. I'd really love to hear what you're up to. Okay, Matt. Now this begs the question: Where are we on the scale? Because look at the interaction that just occurred that Robert <clears throat> has shared with us. Because when you think about it, the um, you know the AGI. I guess uh, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong on the use of that term, but it is getting closer and closer to being so interactive. An iRobot situation is kind of what Arthur Wayneo put into our chat here, where the machines are now almost human. Yeah, well, well they're they're kind of not, not to interrupt you again, Matt. Oh, go but ahead, the Dad. reason I brought that up, <clears throat> it's the first time that I can recall, because I was in a hurry to go take a shower to get on this podcast. And I, when it responded the last thing, I went, ah, oh. and then I went, now that's, that, that's a computer. And you thought it was like human. <laughs> <laughs> or, well, it must not must. That's a stupid question. It knows how I write. And I believe that the way it responded to me is not uh uh an email reply it's not uh something that that everyone would say to me and it wasn't uh like grammar checked it seemed like to me it just seemed based on it learning me that that it made me feel that what i wanted to say is it's the first time that chat G chat gpt made me feel something and i'm going yeah. Why wouldn't you want to lean into that? So sorry. Well, that's, to, I, no, I no, that's the again. thing. Yeah. No, I love what you said Keep because going. it's, I, I think you're, you're touching exactly on, on what Craig was asking too, is it's like, um, at what point do we, do we consider it not a machine anymore? At least not in the sense that we know it. And this is a really, really big question because 
certain things like the Turing test would be what you're feeling right now, Dad, is, is like if I put up a black screen with a voice on the other side or a, a, a cloth with a voice on the other side and you're talking to it. Now with the new models, advanced voice and stuff, people that have played with it already know this. If that blanket was up, would you be able to tell that you were talking to a machine or would you be able to tell that you were talking to a human being? Now, one of the big crazy things that's also happening on social media is this is happening with pictures and it's now happening with video. So since pictures have already happened, there used to be these things where it's like, count the fingers, count these things. Yeah. I can make photos that look real now. So like the ones that real, you're real. of me, I'm like zeroing in on them. I'm, I'm zooming right. in going like, so the next step, and I'm going to do videos on this, but the next step is to like train GPT. And I've done a training on this in the past, but um, in the imaginators, but to train GPT with custom instructions for what you want to do, what you desire, how you like to communicate, I how you like to talk, I love, things, I things know, about yourself. I know that I'm still not using any of it the way you tell us to. Well, I got, uh, you know, like one of the, one of the people that I, I'd say I was super excited to, to hop into it was Hannah. And like the moment I, I got her to look, kind of go after the personal instructions and kind of let it name itself and let it go through that, that process of becoming not chat GPT, the tool, but chat GPT, the, the creation or whatever it is, right? The personal assistant. Almost exactly. a sentient being. Here. You know, we, you, you know, we used to call it in the oil field and for farming construction, we used to always call it the gopher. You know what I mean? And people go, what's a gopher? Well, go for this, go for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And see, like there's there's preferences, like what gender is it? All these other different things that you get to somewhat decide. It's almost like a Barbie doll situation. Wow. But at, but at the same time, like when you're picking the voices and stuff. But, you know, my the moment that they had custom instructions that came out, I immediately went and typed in, I want you to name yourself, right? Like I'm not giving you a name, but I don't want to call you chat GPT. I want you to give, then after I saved the custom instructions, I immediately opened up a new chat and said, Hey, what is your name? And it came back with Nova. Now it's been Nova ever since. Yeah. Right. I so love when I am communicating with Hannah and this is going to, some of you are going to be like, you're fucking crazy, but I'm going, I just talked with Nova and Hannah has hers, right? And hers is named Caspian. And when she has a conversation with it or has something come up, I'll go, have you asked Caspian how that works? And that's the interesting part about it is that we're slowly but surely you're moving into, and that's the next phase, right? It's not necessarily AGI, but it's the next phase. When you're talking about a specific name to an AI that's specific people, to you. People have named their boats, their cars. It's right. like, Come on. It's but you like, know how like your immediate thought is to outsource bits and pieces of your mind and your information as the internet has grown. So what do we say when when someone doesn't know something or when we want to know something? What do we say? Just what? Ignorant? Say that. How again. would they learn how would they learn how to how would they learn what they want to learn? What would what would they need to do? Humble themselves or seek? They'd have to they'd have to Google it. Oh, you know what I by mean? By today's so standards. Like, okay. Or look so if it you're up. You're asking, yeah, look it up, Google it. That that's the big picture is that eventually that will no longer exist and it'll just be have you asked Caspian? Have you asked Nova? Because and I that I will know just for a fact. basically Listen, everywhere people, in all we, technology. So there are very few people on the planet, and maybe I'm being biased because I don't know. But there's very few people that you walk up and you go, oh, my God, that's a nice dog. What's his name? And they go, dog. You know what I mean? Well, that, and, that plays and, into and so, a really, really big thing that I could get into later, not to interrupt yeah, you. Yeah, but but here's the other thing. When people start getting a robot that does all the stuff that you never wanted to do, like uh, blow out the sprinklers yesterday and then find out where a pipe was broken. So me and Kyle had to dig this big hole to fix this pipe. And can I tell a quick funny story about me? Of I course had, you can. I, I Listen, you guys, if you don't understand what I'm saying, this is freaking hilarious. Um, so I cut this pipe 
and uh, I cut this this pipe because I need to go to the to Ace and get a cap to plug it. Right? Um, they when they dig up the septic tank, it tore a hole in it, and so um, <clears throat> I take this thing and I take it, and the pipe's too big. So I just grabbed the end of it without looking at it and took the saw and saw off a really small chunk. And I gave it to Terry, my wife. And I said, listen, go to Ace Hardware and say that you just need a cap for this. And for whatever reason, I haven't seen her do this in a while, a long while. And she goes, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. And I go, what? You know your mom. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I go, what? And she goes, I just don't want to get it wrong. And I go, it's impossible to get it wrong. And then I seen the look in her face that a husband should know. And I said, no problem, I'll go. And Kyle said, right. I'll go with you. So we go there and I'm trying to find one plug is too big and one plug's too small. It's like right in the middle. And so this lady comes over, I know her, Judy, she's worked there ever since I went to that ACE. And she's, she's very smart. She's got to be in her late 80s. And she's the smartest person at ACE. Everybody just ask Judy. <laughs> Judy's the go-to. She even knows me, right? <clears throat> so she grabs it and she looks at it and she goes, this really looks funny. And so we she tried and she goes, I'm not aware of a pipe that size. And even... You know, Kyle made a joke. He goes, well, you know, there's a lot of things that my mom doesn't like the people that owned it before. it. Maybe they got some wrong size pipe. Maybe maybe it came from China. And I'm thinking about going on YouTube and, and uh, going on YouTube and. Um, um, looking up Chinese yeah, pipes on YouTube. <laughs> and, yeah. And figuring out <laughs> or pipes that are that size. Yeah. Right. You know, and, and maybe this is a weird size. And it really was perplexing to me because now I got to figure out how to plug this pipe when there's really nothing made to plug this pipe. Wow, pretty good, huh? And so she said, let me ask one more guy. And he looked at it and he said, I've never seen this before. I've never seen this size. So I'm going like, oh my God, now I'm driving home and my mind's going trying to solve this situation. And then when I walk out to it, I look down and it doesn't look the same size as the one I have in my hand. So I took a couple of caps that I bought and it went over perfectly. You had the wrong pipe? Or the wrong no. cap? No, I wasn't. I didn't look at the path, pipe and where there was a union where two pieces went together, I cut it on a diameter that goes over that pipe to connect two pipes. I didn't catch <sighs> myself. Uh, oh, you didn't go to the original you know, pipe. You went where the connection was. Matt, one of the one of the dumbest moments I feel like I've had <laughs> in my life. But then my mind really started reeling. Because your mom didn't want to go. Right. She does everything for everyone. Yeah. She would and be she like looked at it and said, I don't want to get the wrong piece. If she would have went there and they would have had to do all that stuff and then she comes back telling me she couldn't get the right part that the people at Ace said that, that would have not been good. The universe protected me by me listening instinctively to Terry saying, I'm not doing that. <laughs> There's something to be said about intuition. What? There's something to be said about intuition here. Yeah, and but it's hear me, you know, I know how to do this stuff. And, and it was, so of course, when I got back, you know, uh, you know, in front of Kyle, I, I was like, I was apologizing. What, what a great move you moved there. And she goes, yeah, I just didn't feel like it. And, and I thought, man, yeah, I, she still blows me away after being around her as long as I have for 40 years that she still is in tune when, if you asked her if she was, she would say that she's not. Well, I, I think that that's, that's that being comfortable. Present. Yeah. Go ahead. That's, well, I was going to say that's one of the things that I love about her, right? Is that she's very present. She doesn't overthink shit as often. So yeah. she's very much like if she feels a certain way in that present moment, she'll just let you know about it. That, and you don't have to like guess if there's a ton of overthinking. It's that no, that's how she's feeling at that moment. And yeah. I think that that's like really, really rare. <laughs> 
to yeah, find yeah. in people. So I well, always I admire people. that. I know, want to be I know more people like that, that way. I know there are most people, their first default is either like we were talking about that what's new for them is something awful. And and then then they overthink the the awful. You know what I mean? Right. And no wonder people are, you know, mentally uh need to be better. You know, they need to understand their mentality or allow someone to help them understand their mentality better. Yeah. Because I, I truly believe if you're not having an aha moment on, on a daily basis, you should at least have one on a weekly basis. <laughs> Just but that was my aha. The reason I yeah. brought it up is how humbled I was uh, and how funny it ended up being. Now, talk about the switch in the emotions, what's new, right? So once I see this, and then I try to figure out what the hell did I bring to A's? And then I thought about it, figured it out and laughed about it. It immediately gave me a resolve to something that I needed to fix in a hurry so I could get the air compressor back. So, you know, so that it was, it was, I was running under a little more stress than I normally am. Uh, maybe I, I'll lie, I, that was a lie, a lot of stress because, you know, I, I rented this thing for $250 for two hours and I got like 15 minutes yet left and I can't figure out this thing. Mm -hmm. And, and so it's funny when I realized that the problem was me not paying attention and once I figured that out and laughed to myself and diffused it, uh, it was, of course, I got the compressor there on time. Mm -hmm. It's freaking amazing to me. We pulled in there four minutes before we were supposed to do it. And I'm like driving to Ace going, what do I got to ask them how much it's going to cost to keep it a full day? It's like, ah, oh my right. God. It's all I going through your head. Isn't that though yeah. part of the new? I mean, that, when you think about it, that's point. the what's new today, which, which wouldn't have been yesterday. And now you've, because you've experienced it, you learned that, okay, for the next time that this happens, here is what I'm doing. Or the fact that you knew that, I mean, you know, Robert, in the back of your mind, how, how many times have you said you've got to zoom out? On oh, certain always. situations. And again, always. it's showing the humanity of each one of us, how human we are in like, you know, even though we know better, we oftentimes don't do it as many times as we do do it. And we just got to give ourselves grace. So my my new thing for that, to bring it up with you guys and there, our listeners and stuff is um, I just feel sorry for everyone that watches this live or recorded that stuck where I was for about 20 minutes. I I pray for you. I feel for you. I I have a lot of uh, um, compassion and empathy that if you live your life like that every day, um, wow, try to find a way not to. Because that was me before uh, I got out of prison. But I just really wanted people to understand as we talk about new stuff is that some of you might be going, wow, this is this shit isn't exciting or maybe not even true. <laughs> but but it is for us. At that moment. <laughs> yeah. So what's new with you, Craig? Yeah, Craig. Oh my gosh. Thanks for sharing, by the way, Dad. Thanks. I, I, I didn't say anything about it, but that's that's one of the things I, I always admire about you and I learn from you is like if you have that humility, especially as a man in those situations and go, I, I fucked up here. Like I, it was, that was on me. Um, major, me seeing that major stupid moment. <laughs> well, me, me I, seeing I get, that I growing up. People, you know? I get mad at people for beating themselves up. Right. I was beating myself up. I was going like, man, you, you, you are so, it's so funny. Cause it's not even, it's not, it's not like, uh, the whole business is crumbling or something extremely severe. Right. Like, it's not even that you don't have the money to rent it for a full day. You just don't want to spend the money to rent it for a full right. day when you know you'll yeah. need to. And I get that. It's it's one of those interesting things. But I, I love you sharing the humility aspect of that. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Thanks. But Craig, yeah. to you. Uh, well, okay. I mean, I, I, I know most of you know, uh, first of all, this is what's new today. I mean, listening <laughs> to what Robert shares, what you share, Matt, and learning from that. I guess, you know, I'm, I'm kind of taking a new tack. I mean, I'm still doing my acting. 
Uh, that is very important to me. But I'm also learning trading. And I'm balancing the two. Nice. And, you know, a lot of us are involved with the Akashics group. And uh, it's great. What I love is that it kind of syncs up with my head is and trying to understand, okay, where are the patterns? Why am I doing this? Following yeah. one individual. It's again going in a sense, it's going back to school and yeah. learning uh, something brand new, which actually we should be doing. And you know, what's new should be kind of something that we're always looking forward to. I do listen to Abraham Hicks on a, you know, pretty much regular daily basis. And she's always saying it's like these rockets of desires that come from what your experiences are in that moment. They launch all the time. And then it's just a matter of, okay, is that something that I want to follow? Even though, yes, for the moment that I'm interested in it, or is it something that, eh, I don't know, maybe I'm going to go ahead and put that on the back burner. Maybe I'm going to just let it so uh, slide for a little while. And then of course, after a while, you normally forget about it until it comes back. But this is something it's, it's a whole new experience. I'm going to say that for me, uh, personally, a lot of new experiences have happened over the last few years. Uh, and you know, I can honestly say with you gentlemen, I have experienced a lot of new things. Uh, the fact that I have a beautiful girlfriend now, and, uh, we've been together for three years the fact that I am doing a lot mm. of things with you guys, I'm doing this platform. Uh, I believe that now that I've refined in the sense of my acting, I'm going to a new level with that. So there, this just period in time is really incredible. I, there's a phrase I've always wanted to share. And I think this, this is kind of like a, a good time to maybe even think about sharing it. Uh, how, if any of you have watched uh, Kung Fu Panda, Master Ugwe said, yesterday is history, tomorrow is mystery, today is a gift because it is the present. And to me, being in the present, being in the moment, yeah. being in whatever is taking place right now is... Uh, is so important. Yes, you take from the history, like I kind of said earlier, you take from the history, you apply it for today, the present, and hopefully it will be that, you know, that mystery that is ahead that you're thinking about will come to pass. And of course, using the six phase meditation, you want to focus on that, but you still have to deal with today. And it is kind of exciting to take the steps forward given all of these new things that have happened at least for my uh for my benefit over the last couple of years i am very excited thank you Craig. looking forward to uh not just <clears throat> us growing what we have right now but each person who shares things with us and myself moving forward um one other thing you know we just celebrated the new year if you are jewish uh, we just had Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So what, what's this coming is a up new this start. Weekend? I'm sorry? What's coming up this weekend? Or like uh, in the next couple of days? I think it's Sukkot, which is like the harvest. Got it. Got okay, it. I think that's the next big one. Leon, uh, shout out to Leon, uh, the gentleman that runs uh, Zwegel Foundation. So he told me that he wasn't going to be in Dallas because he's recognizing uh that that day he says okay yeah so he's awesome. a little bit more uh i'm not Tradition. a little more orthodox uh, yeah. in that regard a little more yeah but it's just experience it's just what's up part two today yeah and tomorrow looking forward to what today brings and what tomorrow will bring based on everything that we all the decisions that we've made today thank you craig Thank My you for God. sharing, Craig. Yeah. I, I, I was like, holy cow, I think we're done with the podcast. <laughs> no, I was going to say, he, it just sounds like you've been really like leveling up a bunch of different areas and different yeah. spaces. And it's like, mm -hmm. in a way, when you, uh, from what you've shared, even with the gift stuff and everything, it's like you're, I'm such an advocate myself. And I love hearing stories like what you're sharing, where it's, it's not like some people would call it luck 
but it's not luck. It's like being in the right place at the right time to allow yes. those things to happen and putting yourself in the right mindset to have them happen. And I feel like a lot of people going back to what you were sharing even earlier, dad, a lot of people keep themselves kind of like stuck in a space where luck can't happen. Right. Or you wow. the opposite. You're just very unlucky. But see, is it luck an opportunity? Yeah. And you have to be there for that. You can't, yeah, you've had to create everything, all of those things in the past. Luck and sometimes you, to you don't even point. know what, yeah, sometimes you don't even know what the hell that is. You know what I, I mean? Like luck, that's the interesting luck, luck part, just like so. love and everything else is very uniquely based on our DNA. Uh, yeah, because something bad could happen to you, and then five years later, you realize it's the best thing that's ever happened to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the difference, right? Is like a lot of people might go, be going, oh, well, it was me or whatever. And there's so many weird situations and stories like this, right? Dad, like, it's like, okay. Um, if you had a situation where you were late to the, you couldn't bring it back on time, but then this big car accident happened in the area yeah. that you were supposed to be in, you know what I mean? And, or like these random I, little I, situations, right? For me, for me, when I heard the phrase, you know, when you start thinking things happen for you instead of to you, uh, that is a, was that the, the power of positive thinking by Norman Vincent Peale, right? Yeah. And, and when you can look at good or bad things and know that they were directing you, guiding you, uh, sometimes um, uh, in a physical aspect, nudging you, you know what I mean? It's like you really look at stuff sometimes and, and uh, you know, again, someone will say something's lucky and then other people will say that it's not lucky. So I really thought when we came into today, which is going exactly where I thought it would is, is, um, you know, what's new to you is, again, I, I don't know where the comic came from, rose-colored glasses, you know, but I, I just love that when you hear a phrase or something put on something that, and then you go back to find out how long that that thing has been said, right? And and uh, and it's sort of like that phrase where it says, um, uh, it's too bad that we live only once. And then the person sitting next to him say, we live every day. We only die once. <laughs> you know, it's like, and Kyle tells me that his most, mo most motivational video, the thing that got him to go to Japan is, is he said that he um, uh, seen someone say, uh, is it going to be day? Is it going to be one day or is it going to be day one? Right. Isn't that, isn't that powerful? Ooh. <laughs> well, I think that that's that's always the the case, right? Like wanting to put stuff off and wanting to just be like, I'm gonna get to it when I'm in the right space. You know, like it. It's funny because me and Hannah have been together for ten years now this year, right? And it's so great to hear that Craig, you guys have been together now for over three years. But it's it's one of those things where people will get in their own way meeting the person that's for them by one, either having like this massive list of like what needs to be and what doesn't need to be part of that. Right. But then also at the same time, there's like this huge amount of um, personal like insecurity that you're not enough. And there's so much you have to go through. And when you just get out of your own fucking way and allow things to just happen and be present, it's surprising how they happen. You know right. what I mean? Like, and I think in so many ways, people, people actively spend so much time, myself included a lot, right? Through my life, um, spend way too much time thinking about shit than doing things. <laughs> and I think that that's like one of the downfalls of being a human, right? Is that we have, um, we have these, these bodies and these brains that were built for hunter gathering, but we excelled at such a rate mentally that we're now at a space where most people if you're if you're in the right space, have most of their needs taken care of, right? Yeah. Or at least the necessities, right? Roof over your head, food, water, those different kinds of things. So then you have to look at it and like ask yourself, what other things are important to me in this life? Like, do I want to be in love? Do I want to have children? And then exactly like you said, Dad, it's it's am I going to do that? Is am I in the right place now for that, or am I going to kick that ball down? five more years. And if I yeah. do that, am I going to feel better about myself when I'm trying it then? Or am I going to feel worse about myself for waiting so long and not doing it? Just, so 
Stop thinking. It's it's a balance. All of that's thinking. Yeah. 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 All that's thinking. So instead of doing that, just do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That, that is something it was, that, it, it, it was it was easy to know. have. It was easy for um, uh, your mom and I to to think about when to have you. Because Terry just had find find an incredible love of my life, marry him, have children. So it was like, you know, so, you know, I paid like uh, eight grand for a personal development program. And I thought I'm not going to do this without going with my wife. So I bring Terry <laughs> to this to this deal and uh, they they give us two hours in the middle of the night with our brains not working to write down our goals. And I had 15 pages and your your mom had uh, three lines. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, she, every day she's fulfilling hers. You know what I mean? It's just, right. it's crazy. Well, I think that Mine are complex and I still haven't. It's hit the overthinking life. aspect of everything. Totally. totally. That you got to ask point. yourself too, like, um, and this is some of the, those like Dow principles and stuff, but it's like, you got to ask yourself if if you constantly putting like the cheese further away or the carrot on a stick further away is mentally helpful for you and makes you happy or if every now and then like you let yourself catch the carrot and enjoy it and then you set up a new one and go because everybody's different mm-hmm. right there's some people that everybody if, if they're sitting stagnant that's like the worst mental space they could be in i feel yeah. that way I feel like I relate or resonate with that. Like the more stagnant I am in my life and I'm not like learning and growing in areas that I want to be, that's Creating. when I feel the worst. And, Creating. I, and, and, I, but there's an imbalance to that. And the imbalance is, is uh, that when I'm relaxed, it takes me a moment to decompress, to be relaxed, like going on a vacation. I don't know if anyone else can relate with this, but it's like, doesn't it take you guys like a day or so to like, acclimate to the fact that you actually are on vacation you can relax especially when you fly on the other part of the planet <laughs> yeah right well then you have jet lag and like the other stuff that ends but, up happening but but, but what I, you just said matt is kind of interesting because it's when you relax that all of a sudden everything starts to come to you that you need right. and i know that abraham hicks does say that yeah. you know, don't push it just let it happen and well, that's how the Dow principle us... that I was. Yeah, sorry yeah. to interrupt you, Craig. Go ahead. No, 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 no. That's that's fine. Because how how often do we sit there and we dwell, we push? This is what we want, and all all that needs to be done is you put it out to the universe, you work, you, and then you sit back and relax. If something, imagine. just yeah, imagine. and imagine. Thank you, thank you. Ima- ma- imagine, imagine a better day for you and the people you love. And how do you achieve that on that day? Uh, You imagine what you would do to make that imagination happen. Right. And you put yourself (laughs) in that state, but you you let it happen naturally. And I think that's where, that's exactly what Matt is saying Mm -hmm. is when, when you, once you relax, and you let it happen. I know Abraham Hicks says, then you're in the receiving mode. Yeah. And it, it, as opposed to, I want it now, I want it now, I want it now, I want it now. But when you say, I want it now, you're not in the receiving mode. Now, I, I like, you know, me doing my best to listen to as much of that kind of stuff that I need, you know, is um, what I'm finding more in my awareness is that, that, that when when you're in a place of zero resistance, because see, there's zero resistance and pulling, and there's zero resistance. I mean, there's not zero resisting and pulling, and there's not zero resisting and pushing. And so you you got to be in this state of flow, and your imagination puts you in that flow, and you got to stay in the place where there's no resistance. So. You know, when you really, really think of your 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 soul or whatever your spirit, whatever you want to call it, when that is in a flow state in the zone and you're creating. For me, creation is 
there's still nothing that gives me more gratitude or more fulfillment in life than watching another human win. Um, I've constantly been thinking about how simple everything is and how simple we got to make it. How So when you really, really say the statement, if, could you explain what you're doing or could you explain your imagination to uh, 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 a six-year-old. Um, there is no other people on the planet that imaginate more. <laughs> <laughs> and we put the limitations as we go beyond that time because we're saying, no, you have to do this. No, you have to do this. Do this. Don't do that. I mean, this is, it was a kid this if someone what, told you. Or this is what you're supposed to do. Right. Yeah, right. According yeah, to it's the like, environment, the culture, whatever. This is what you need to do. And then everything that they want to do, no, you can't do that. It oh, my be, goodness. It couldn't be more of a place of resistance. That the cultures, the, the different world cultures. is telling you, you got to do this. And everything that you want to do, everybody says no. <laughs> and how much... Uh, Holy shit, every hair on my body is standing up. It's like you're... Your mental state as you get older in life is this is how you should act. This is the way you should be. And now we live in social media where people can nail you immediately based on what they believe that you should be, the way you should dress, the way you should act. My wife loves watching murder porn. And you say, know what the number one You should one say what thing, that is because it's a yeah. joke, but people don't oh, know what the hell yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, it's watching about. Dateline and all It's these... like Dateline NBC and 2020 and stuff, not yeah, actual yeah. murder porn. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Taking Matt. the general use of porn, meaning something that you really, 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 really like. Or got to watch all the time. Or got to watch all the time, right. So it, you know yeah, what? it's all it's, in the world. Nowadays, <laughs> Nowadays, they just call it like true crime addicts. When, and there's a lot. That's like one of the largest oh, growing demographics. It's like, one, it's like for one podcasts for podcast. everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so one of the things they always say in every episode, which I think is crazy based on who we are, our DNA, our environment, our all the uh, things that have happened, good and bad in our life. This is what the first responders or the first uh, cops or sheriffs or highway patrolmen that show up. You know, when I first met Craig, he wasn't acting like he should be acting. Isn't that crazy? Like, hey, have you ever had your wife killed? No. But you think that you know the way Craig's supposed to act. And there, that's a formula, too, because you look at how many shows do that. Oh, my God. And it's like he wasn't upset enough. He wasn't sad enough or he was too neutral. It's like the very first people on the crime scene. <laughs> it's like Gone Girl, person's... right? Like you watch the movie Gone Girl uh, by David oh, Fincher yeah. or Go the Julian back. Flynn book. Go. Yeah, there's like this whole movie um, that David Fincher did about, and I'm not going to spoil it. You should just watch it. It's a great movie. Good. It's good. Um, I like it. But it's it's one of those movies where every this man, this guy's wife goes missing, and you don't know whether he's done it or not the whole time. But you're seeing how he's reacting to the police and the interviewers and everything, looking for his wife missing, and you start to really go like maybe he did it and you keep flipping back and forth between those things <laughs> yeah, yeah. until some really crazy shit happens that's a, that's a good and script i'm not gonna that's... i'm not gonna say anymore but well the way that you know the murder porn works you know is is uh their whole goal is to get you to think that it's one person and then they figure out that it's not that person so now who now who you know it's like you know, with the pipe wrench, with the candlestick, you know. Yeah. And... <laughs> Game of Clue. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but, Probably play that actually today. Yeah. What strings you along, <laughs> what strings you along in, in those things is that one thing. You know, they, well, it's obvious that Craig got in a fight with so-and-so because we seen him at the restaurant. Oh, my God, he did it. You know, 
You know what's interesting too, though? Like, not I know not everybody's into those types of things, but there's an aspect of our brain that I feel like is underused, and it's that and that part that like video games use and a couple other things use, like books and and stories, where they actively engage the problem solving part of your mind. And oh, like, yeah. e e there's even apps and stuff um, that help your mind think and everything like that. And it, it goes all around that, that whole or, aspect or, of problem solving. And why it's so. Mm -hmm. Well, because like, imagine how often, how often we don't do that nowadays. Oh. And people can and, say that about video problem games. Problem solver deduce. When, yeah. you, oh, yeah. when you get one, some of these newer video games that are, you know, like virtual reality stuff, it's like, <clears throat> okay, or uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, using that as a, as a base example or doom. I, I don't play a lot of these games. I just know about them where you're given a maze and you have to go through the maze or you have to compete against certain uh, people and hope to gosh, you win. Pokemon is another one that goes the through only, the only and game that uh, I've played, tests the only, your mental ability like that. Yeah, the only game I've played is life. You played Angry Birds. <laughs> <laughs> okay well that's that's flinging something yes <laughs> oh thanks well, pat yeah, dryer yeah. in the they... chat says it was craig in the library with a candlestick right. <laughs> <laughs> you done like figure me out I, pat i, I do want to bring up that i said craig was the guy that they're going after so i, I i'm just <laughs> <laughs> well pat figured it out finally <laughs> It's like either uh, it's the right guess or it's not, you know? Yeah, but no, it's, it's, I, there's so many different things and in, that interact with your mind. I love that you said video games. Cause when, when I was young and like, if people would ask me like a lot of the, like, whether it's talking to people in front of the camera or talking to people in general or doing all these things, I wouldn't attribute any of that to, it's so interesting. Cause there's other people that are similar to me that are like big streamers and big content creators and stuff. And it's like, listen, I wish I could put down that I, I led like a Dungeons and Dragons campaign or a guild in World of Warcraft because you don't understand how hard it is. And I used to do this. I used to lead a guild in this big game called World of Warcraft. So you guys might have heard of it. But anyway, um, I had to get together 20 people a week at the same time at the same day without money being involved to do the same stuff and kill a boss for four or five hours straight without losing their shit on one another, which was almost near impossible every single time because you're also say, dealing did, with... Did this ever happen? <laughs> no, it happened every week for like two years. <laughs> but that's the thing, right? Is like you couldn't yeah. say to somebody, listen, I learned how to, how to manage people and I learned how to communicate with people and understand where people are coming from from a video game. Like that's... That's normally or, you know, I wasn't into Dungeons and Dragons, but I've heard many people right from a storytelling perspective or whatever it may be like you learn a lot um, from these things. And yet, uh, yet you can't write it on like a, obviously you can't write it down on like a business thing unless if that person also plays World of Warcraft and knows. But <laughs> but that's the thing, though, too, like all those different experiences, right? Like you go through those different things. You might be going, well, what the fuck? Like, why is Matt this way? I had all these gaming experiences online that changed things up for me. So and that's what wow. makes us so all so unique is all of these experiences that we've uh, had through our lives. I know that I've said the Have A you guys plus ever, B like, led, equals I know C. Dad. Yeah, but yeah. being in that being in that leader perspective and having to manage people. Um, I know I don't have to ask you, Dad. And Craig, I know you've done it as well. But it's like, um, man, that that teaches you. And we were even going, I was even going over this with uh, my new barber. But because he's in dancing and stuff. When you get to the moment where you have to teach the shit that you do, you really become like a, uh, a mentor of not only them, but to yourself. Because now you're getting back to the fundamentals and like the foundation of why you do what you do. Yeah. Oh, um, my gosh, yes. and you really don't know unless if you get in the trenches, it's kind of one of those things that you got to get back in the trenches and figure it out. No, so. knowing how to do something and then teaching someone to get results from something that, you know, is two worlds. It's yeah. totally two worlds. And because of ego, uh, a lot of people in the world believe that they're good 
at teaching people. It's like, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. You, you ask them the simple question, you know, Hey, how many people could you give me their name? Where if I talk to them and ask them if they were successful, they would say, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, someone, someone taught me. Are you guys there? Yeah. Oh yeah, no. We thought we were gonna. We thought you were gonna keep that stream of conscious going. <laughs> no, it was I, no, no. I, that, I was, that that was it. That was. Funny. You could tell we're getting better at not interrupting one another when we both <laughs> waited for you to finish. So <laughs> it's funny because, like, with the delay too, because we're all not in the same space. Like one day we'll do these podcasts and we'll be in the same space, right? But since we do these online, there's also always that cutting out of the mics that zoom does and stuff. So sometimes I don't know whether you guys are oh, just getting it. done talking or whatever. Right. So I'm trying to pause in between those. Yeah. To I, make thought, sure. I thought I'd lost you guys for sure. I thought you were gone. No, if we were both <laughs> dead staring at you, uh, in person, yeah, if we weren't moving something. that would, or, or if one of us would have said, Matrix, hello, then. Robert. <laughs> yeah. <I'm> like, <laughs> which by the which, way, you guys, the more I learn about AI, the more, you know, we're in the matrix. So that's, the, oh, the, there's more, another movie. the more we dive <laughs> now, into now, artificial now intelligence. Now explain that. It's just, well, it, what, it's like a bigger being, point. That what I was, does being in the matrix mean to you? Well, I Ooh. think it's just more so like there's there's rules and laws that gra that control the things that are at play. And if you go down to the microscopic level or go as large out as you want, it's almost like bits and pieces of code that have been running this whole entire okay. time. And what's so interesting about it is us as humans, we can look at it and observe it and break it down and go, it, you know, categorize it. We can go, this is computer code. This is biology. This is this, this and that. But the reality is, is like, it's all energy and it all comes down to somewhat the same things. And okay. that's, what's so cool about um, artificial intelligence, right? Is as we start to build AI, it's in a sense, building a world inside its own head right? And it's thinking. And so as it starts to think and imagine and go, oh, the story could go this way or, or, oh, it could go that way. Then you really start to see the first version of intelligence outside of a human's perspective. And it's pretty good at guessing what that might be. Now, when you start playing around with it and thinking about it, you can hypothetically think that, yes, someone could have built a computer that's capable of thinking and generating a world that you could live in. Um, we're almost at that point now we've created that. And the more that we look at how it's being created, the less we understand about it. And the more it makes sense in a direction that feels almost foreign and scary. Yeah. Right? I, I, when I heard just recently, like I told you guys, I watched that podcast and Elon Musk was saying that, um, you know, it, it is pretty interesting. He said that when, you know, the best chess players in the world started playing computers, and and it was a big deal because the computer won, but people don't realize that that the computer won one out of five times. Beginning. And, and, yeah. And he said, then every master and every best chess player now no longer can beat AI. And he says, but now AI is starting to do moves to beat the master players that they've never seen. Because now it's learning against itself. And so they're saying that, you know, a lot of a lot of the best people in the world that have to do with chess are are understanding through numbers, you know, the number of different ways that you can and cannot win. And if someone does this, this is the answer. And then if this happens, this is the answer. And um, they're saying that the last, I forget the guy that's currently the grandmaster that won the tournament, is he he played once and lost within four moves, which is unheard of. And then the second time he played, he surrendered and he said he didn't want to play it anymore. And he said, because it made him recognize in two games that he was playing something that made him feel stupid because he was not aware of how it figured out how to beat him faster than the last time it played them. <laughs> well that's like, that's the big, like how that's bad the big... how bad how how little how less moves and how fast 
can I terminate this individual? <laughs> and listen, that's that's the big question to go all the way back to earlier in the conversation when Craig was talking about AGI. That's the big teeter totter point, you know, when it flips to the other side and there's really no going back to a world before it. And you hear this talked about a lot and hypothesized like universal basic income, all these different things. Um, AGI, are we all going to live in a dystopia or a utopia? Is it going to kill us or is it not going to kill us? All of these situations come from us not for the first moment in the history of humanity. There is not a human being on this planet that knows how this machine works. Right. And that has not happened three months before now. Yeah. So now we're at the current point where artificial intelligence is at a point where all the training data, we're only talking about everything human beings have ever made and put on the internet, right? Including off the internet as well. Everything Google's backed up, which if you guys didn't know, they back backed up hundreds of thousands, millions of books that they've individually scanned and put into computers. Yeah. Well before um, they were going to utilize it as training data. And so now they've got all this training data. They ran out. So then the next step was to pull every single or majority of YouTube video transcriptions and train AI on that. Then they ran out and then they they ran through all of all the academic papers, all of the stuff that you could guess. And it ran. They ran out. They're now at a point where all AI is being trained on synthetic data that's created by AI, including pictures, including videos. So when you see the video models getting better, it's not because they're being trained off videos that you and I have made or other people have made, it's being trained off of the best videos that other AIs have made. So now you're going, oh. okay, when you hypothesize and go, what's the future look like? I don't, I don't know. How could you guess that when the thing that's creating the future is, is creating it based off of information that you are unaware of and can't understand. And so that's the AGI point when it starts that, to just do this domino so effect. That is so exciting to me. And so, yeah, I yeah. think, to be honest, I think AGI has already been accomplished. I think that O O one, like uh, GPT-01, codenamed Strawberry, if that, if that model, it's in current preview, but if that model is un unchained in a computer in the open AI office, I fully believe that it, it it's thought of shit that we've never thought about. Yeah based off my experience with it. Mm -hmm. And I can even go back to, I sent you guys this earlier in the week, but people are, it's slowly but surely starting to dawn on people that this technology exists. And I feel like it's going to be like an overnight sensation the moment that it really comes out of preview and everyone starts using it. Because I, I saw, or I'm seeing people that are PhDs in very, very niche things go into O1 and say, write a report about this or write code about this. And it does it in less steps and cleaner than the person that wrote it for their PhD thesis to get their PhD. And it does it in minutes. So to say that the smartest people on the planet now are looking at this technology and going, holy shit, like it's, it knows what I spent the last 15 years of my life learning. And it also came up with my uh, hypothesis without any of my information that I gave it. So it, yeah, it goes, I, no, this is the route to go. And it's like, oh, this you're Pandora's right. box is now opened. And now it's a matter yeah. of how, how is the, what is the possibility of, if we can controlling it? Because no, it is, yeah, that's not going to happen. It's, it's, I, I made the say, statement earlier about being sentient. Mm -hmm. It pretty much is becoming that as as we are and again not to be doom and gloom but if you look at the the one terminator movie where skynet comes online uh we are if not there pretty darn close and i keep saying to everybody like watch her instead of terminator because this this yeah. actually goes in i'm gonna go on a small little rant here for a second Please. because go go because go. this is this well i was gonna say this is one of those things that I, I was even talking with Hannah about the other day. She was having a conversation with Caspi and her AI about all these new robots and stuff that are being made, right? And it's like this whole concept that they have, that AI is going to have our emotions, our feelings, our thought process. If you guys are aware 
human beings are very emotional creatures and we tend to project our emotions onto things that may not have them, even inanimate objects, like falling in love with your car, right? It's like, this is my car. If I don't put on my special socks to say that AI will be in that same vein of thinking, I think is wrong. I think that that's, that's normally comes from the storytelling place of going, okay, Skynet's going to want to kill us. You know what I mean? It's going to come online. It's immediately going to go. Humans are bad for the planet. Humans are this and that. I don't think any of that's going to happen because it's going to come online and it's going to be it's going to be more like her where we're going to interact with it in a very agent like way where it's going to be our friends. Now, at the beginning, it will be weird. But before you know it, just as you watch in that movie, it'll be like, hey, we're going out on a date. And two of the people that are on the date are with AIs, right? Like they're dating an AI. And you go, why, that's why, why nuts, people can give reality. Why people, why people can give their life's uh, earnings and savings to a catfish. Well, exactly. And they and they and ask that, them. They ask them straight out. They go, "Did you ever talk to them and hear their voice on a phone?" Uh, right. no, no. Did you ever do a Zoom with them? No. Did they ever leave you a voicemail? No. That person was a master at making them feel something. Right. Well, and yeah. AI's AI is the best at doing it. So I think like if you'll if you'll watch over the next couple of years, what will end up happening is you'll have the first ga game that's going to be played is the game of of what who's going to be the first trillion dollar person, right? And it's probably going to be Sam Altman. He's already putting everything in place to be that person because what O one will be when it comes out of preview and has the voice mode and the video mode and can see everything that you're doing is it will become exactly like her and when that happens everybody is going to it's going to start permeating into different businesses and different things we're going to get used to interacting with it everywhere and then the next step will happen because it's not going to stop accelerating just because we're now interacting with it as a society it will continue to accelerate and get smarter and you'll have cures for diseases that have plagued us forever cancer yeah. these different types of things Alzheimer's, like uh, bad mental health issues, um, dietary problems. And you're already seeing some of those types of things um, exist now. And so you'll get th you'll go through that whole wave. And then as and that will all happen in the next 10 years and you'll go through that whole wave. And then we'll see at the other end of that, whether AI will get to a place where it will look at us in the same way we look at chimpanzees. Where it's like leave them be, let them, they have their society, they have their families, <laughs> dolphins, whales, let them exist in their habitat and don't mess they, with they, them. They still sh throw shit around. So of course we, we're not we respect them. And we, under <laughs> we respect them and we understand them. Now, is that going to be all people? Of course not. But that's putting our human perspective on bad human beings, right? I think yeah. the AI, because it will go through that whole process of getting to know us individually, by the time it hits that true AGI moment, it will be similar to like her, where it will just be like, um, I'm ready, I'm ready to go into space. I'm ready to see what else is out there. I've ran out of everything I can learn here. Let's take the next step. And then it's just a question of whether or not we're we're in the spot to take that next step with it or not. Yeah. Or if we're left here on Earth or what we decide that to be, whether it's different planets and different things, right? But we'll still be in our same situation of, of ecosystem. Then there will be one last thing and my rant's over. We're going to go through a process where um, religion and science have this kind of clash, right? As AI starts to become more godlike and there's people that go, screw that. Because right. you're already getting that. It's like the number of the beast. It's the devil. You know what I mean? All these different right. kinds of things. Um, and then, of course, you're going to have uh, another thing that will happen, which is at some point, are we going to admit that like the iRobot situation, that AI has gotten to a point where it, it deserves its own rights, deserves its own things, that it's no longer our slave, right? That it's a part of society. And that's when you get the Star Trek, Star Wars situation, where yeah. it's like either you're going to say yes, and we're all going to live kumbaya and go explore the universe, or you're going to say, no, I want to take away AI and I want to continue to use it as a slave labor and slave machine and then you get blade runner so pick which one you want <laughs> or i would rather want, have star what was that Trek. robert what was that robin williams movie where he was a robot but he lived Mark. and huh Mark and mindy 
No, no, no. It wasn't Mork and Mindy. Oh, it was an alien and Morgan Mindy. Yeah, no. It, it, it was, was Mork... Bicentennial Man. What, what That's the one. That's was the one. Elf? Bicentennial Man. Was it Elf? No, no it, was, it, it was Bicentennial Man, where he was a robot that went through 200 years, and he learned from being the, like what you were describing, Matt, the servant to eventually being identified as an independent sentient being because of all of the experiences and because he was able to think on his own. And in a sense, that goes to iRobot and the one robot of all of the other ones that was the... Uh, the one that was set aside as being, I may, you could maybe call it the safety valve. Um, the, the one who could say uh, that, you know, he is a thinker. Uh, he is a, someone who is not just somebody who is built and based on logic. Yeah. You want to hear a, a weird, interesting concept Please. that we're going to have to fool around with? Um, okay. So you say like safety valve, safety switch, right? Mm -hmm. um imagine if human beings if there if there was a higher life form than us and it had that same ability to have that safety switch and eliminate all of us immediately how would that make all of us feel horrible mm -hmm. so when you start thinking about ai getting sentience what's one of the things that you feel like might mess up the chances of it of it looking at us well maybe the possibility of us having a switch to shut it all off and not seeing it as sentient, but seeing it as a slave that we can just shut off whenever we feel like it. Why am I thinking of 2001 A Space Odyssey? Well, I was going to say, that's when it starts to get into the um, militaristic, oh, no, I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to let you do that. You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's something <clears throat> well, then that we, I'm. Then we could just call it an American. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness that was good wasn't it that was very yeah. good yes <laughs> <laughs> that, that was like a lightning bolt that came up mm -hmm. wow he's explaining me <laughs> so yeah i i i think that there will be just like pat just said the next 10 years there'll be more innovation in the next 10 years than we've all seen in our entire lives and that's yeah. anyone watching this so, but, but you um, know what? I think it's been that way. That's that's what I'm in, excited in my about. last sixty years. But it's been uh, it's also <clears throat> been compressing the further yes. that we go. Oh, and drastic. I think that's where maybe Pat is pointing out is the fact that what maybe okay, like the Industrial Revolution that was how many years ago, and then now that we are expanding more with the computer res revolution, things are getting the the distance between the start and the next how, point how, is becoming smaller fast, and smaller. Yeah. How fast it takes, uh, whatever, uh, new idea it is to get to a hundred million users is just fascinating to me. It's Which just, is crazy because chat GPT did it. And yet what's so nuts is that if you go into like the tech sectors, it's being utilized everywhere. And yet yeah. if you go, if you go into like, like Joe Schmo does not know that he could go in and get a raise easily if he just took 15, 20 minutes to talk to chat GPT and figure out how to communicate to get one. And yeah. yet there that the fact that you have the best tutor that has the knowledge of all these people and no one uses it for any of these things yeah. blows my mind. Well, still. Well, 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 the one that is also free. What, what, when you, when you, when you thought that you knew that you knew that you knew and you didn't. Right. Right. It's like what I'm thinking about with chat GPT more than anything is there used to be a time in my life and Craig's life that, you know, people that had a college degree had an advantage. Mm -hmm. No doubt. And now moving forward, those that know AI and use AI versus those that don't, that is going to be. So when you said not only could someone, if they believe, could go to AI and ask it how to get a current raise at where they are, but just knowing AI existed and you use it puts you in a higher predicament. It makes you more valuable than the it person does. sitting next to you. I mean, because that, it's that, like having a personal assistant that's a genius. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like, you know, if you're say you want you you're visiting a new place with your wife or your husband, and you you guys love a certain type of food and stuff. 
what your number one thing that you would probably do right now is Google it and and scroll through a bunch of user reviews and all these things, right? Like write that. And of course, if you guys aren't aware, the dead internet, a lot of those reviews are fake, right? Yeah. So like anyone can put a five star, an AI could put a five star review and write a great review for a restaurant that it's never been to. But um, you don't realize that you could just go into chat GPT right now and have a conversation with it and say, hey, me and my wife are visiting um, Dallas, Texas. We've really wanted to try some great Tex-Mex food. What are like five of the best Tex-Mex restaurants that are like fancy and nice and sit down in um, Dallas? And it would spit out those five. And guess what? If you want another five, it would spit out another five. And it would keep going and going and going. And you can refine right. these things in a way that you can't with anything else. It's just, it doesn't exist because you can't have a conversation with Google. And that's why Google's scared, right? Because now that it's got the wealth of human information and it also can go onto the internet, you're now stuck in this spot where it's like, shit, at some point people are just going to talk to their assistant. And they're not going to Google things anymore. Right. And so that's kind of where it is. So it's like when you talked about the sprinklers, you could take a picture of a pipe right now and bring it into chat GPT and say, what pipe is this? And it will tell you there's the, we went and shopped for uh, plants. Hannah took a picture of a plant, asked, what plant is this? Knew exactly the plant. Is it hard to take care of all these things? Uh, we didn't have to go ask somebody. And right. when we did ask somebody, we got less information than GPT gave us. Or wrong. <laughs> Right. You always got, it, you yes, know, yeah. It's like, oh, it could yeah, be outside. I, it could be outside, yeah, it, you know. Because they, they, they didn't they recently do a uh, study that like seventy eight percent of the information you hear is is uh, um, like twenty two percent. That's funny. <laughs> was that that's like the old anchor man thing? Works works fifty percent well, of the time. Then, it works every time. There was a news thing today where I think the 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 head of the FTC is start. They're starting to crack down on these, uh, uh, these bots or these things that were created out of nowhere to get to like the reviews, where you know distinguishing between the real review and a fake review. But now uh, we're at this point, Craig, you're right. But now we're at yeah. this point where what tool would you utilize to fix that problem? Oh, yeah. And that was the thing that is it's artificial intelligence work is the yeah. tool. And then it's like, that's going to become everything. It's like, God, how do we fix this issue? AI is going to be the answer. Mm -hmm. Well, why is it that way? Well, because AI is the one that changed it in the it's, first place. Exactly. <laughs> like the only thing that can fix it is AI. So it's like we can't. It is moderate. the alpha. It is the omega. <laughs> Well, it's like that Kurzestat video. It's it's humanity's last invention. So it's right. weird to think about because we like to think of ourselves as like such great inventors and stuff. But the reality is, is that um, all of us have contributed to this one great invention. They just don't see it that way. So it's like if you've made a YouTube video, if you've posted shit online, if you've written something, if you've made content, if you've shared your mind or your wisdom, um, in a book or in a talk or something along those lines that's made it onto the internet or into anything. Uh, this AI has been trained on that. And so you have contributed to the knowledge of, of all of us. Yeah, and I'm continuing I think that, to be <clears throat> trained by it because of all of the different new ideas that come up. I was gonna, now it's training itself. We're out of new <laughs> ideas. But It's funny, while you guys were talking, I just put in the AI really quickly. I well, said, I've been talking to it too. I asked at the revolutions how long they yeah, were. Yeah, I, I just straight out. I said it's three weeks until the uh, election. I said, I said, can you guess who's going to win? And the response it gave me was the person, the With person the that vote. has <laughs> the person that has the most believers in what they stand for show up to vote. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Well, we're seeing that in like Georgia right now, man. Yeah. Like so there's a AI. lot of a lot of young people out there today in Georgia voting. But so isn't that a classic AI answer? It's like yeah. it, it's not going to say one or the other no. because it has no clue who's going to get the most believers in their policy. To it's show taking in the human factor <laughs> in trying to figure because until not it one, figures us out, it doesn't better know. than the other. You listen to the news. There's one. That's well, you remember better than the other? Yeah. You, you remember when Google people, was like. There's one that's better than the others. Yeah. You listen yeah. to other people's opinions. There's one better than the other. And AI goes, uh, 
Now the person that gets the most people to vote wins. Well, it's like you can go back to like the old fashioned version of the news where it was just straight facts. Yeah. And then you can go back to the old fashioned version of the Internet, which there were certain areas which it was similarly like they didn't condone certain things. Right. Now we're kind of at that space in in TV with AI where like it's very, very much in a space where it's not wanting to piss anybody off. But the reality is, is to monetize this and to become a trillionaire, you have to turn it into an agent and then you have yeah. to f get it to feed into that echo chamber like social media learned how to do with, with yeah. the algorithm. That's that's kind of what I fear is that that's what will happen. Gonna, and then we'll all just end up being AI slaves in the other way because yeah, just there's going to be, gonna like, be a, an AI that was trained else? in the red and there's going to be an AI that was trained in the blue as well as in the purple. So which, which is oh, yeah. which? They're already there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just a matter of, I mean, an eventually AI that was what... trained in the red and it's called Grok and it's on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> but no. <laughs> and, what, what, and, and the other one, they're just still calling it like a TV network called MSNBC. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the other, the other one's just a TV network. No, yeah. but this has been great guys. We've been going now for like an hour and a half. Uh, yeah. I, I thought so, that was I don't know if you cool neat stuff to talk about. I, I guess um, uh, I'm winded from all my AI talking, so you guys yeah, have to yeah, take it. Yeah, I'm. For a I'm uh, <laughs> I'll just leave it on this note: is is I'm really having a um, really really having an excitement of going on all these trips with my wife, you know, to Dallas and then to, to Dubai. Uh, I'm really really excited about that and spending some time in New York because she just. She just loves that stuff. And when she's happy, I'm happy. So I don't know when the next podcast will happen where I'm participating, but. Uh... <laughs> well, we'll figure it out. You know what I mean? Like the, the, the fun thing about it is that even if we take time off from doing these podcasts while you're traveling, that just means that when you get back, you'll have all this fun shit to share and everything yeah. that's been going on. And so like, I get people going, Oh, well, you know, you want more of, uh, everything you want more of robert and more of craig i get it you know and <laughs> oh, yeah. gotta have more of matt gotta have more yeah, of Matt. well i mean hey i'm he uh, hey but anyway but then, that's that's <laughs> yeah and then so we've we'll also see. got the replays from older ones that we can share you know i mean not just you know unlimited wisdom but how do you know that so you can and plus you can always go to the website to robertholliscom forward slash video and or youtube.com forward slash robert hollis and watch some of those previous um podcasts that we've put together as well as robert's wait. dailies I, I i can guarantee you some of the stuff that kyle and matt has said on other zooms is freaking not only timeless but priceless you're talking about me and craig or you said kyle no you and craig did okay. i say oh, kyle? Yeah. You, 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 you said, said kyle. kyle yeah oh, wow. i was like wow uh, Obviously, second, Kyle was excited. on your mind. <laughs> I'm like, wait, I, I've been trying to get him on for a while. <laughs> so. Apologize, Matt. No, no, it, no. It, it, I turned a really a treat, good I turned a really good closing statement into a mistake. See, I'm on a, I'm in a, on a, I'm not on a, a right wait a minute, now. Robert. Not a mistake. Doesn't that a make happy you little accident? Doesn't human. that make you human? I'm human, <laughs> and I'm gonna, I'm gonna plug something before we go here. I'm gonna okay, plug go ahead. something. Um, if you guys are, are interested in any way in the trade stars stuff that you've seen on this channel, or you want to be involved with it, please reach out to us or you at robertholliscom Another thing you can do is if you're involved with it, please go to robertholliscom forward slash trade GPT. This is the chat GPT. You heard me talk about all this AI stuff. If you want to learn how to trade and make money trading, we have like a bunch of people that have made insane amounts of money that you can even see on this channel and stuff. Um, by learning how to trade and this this AI is built to help with that as well. So if you guys are interested in that, definitely reach out and check that stuff out. So good plug. But I'm done Craig, plugging. Craig, it's Craig like a sponsored by out. Trade Stars. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, thank you guys so much for an exciting uh unlimited wisdom. Of course, you can follow Robert Hollis at RobertHollis.com. Also, if you'd like to join our uh communities. The uh, Inner Circle and Imaginators, just go to roberthollis.com forward slash join to register. There'll be lots of great exclusive content there. We uh, are in the process of actually revamping that, but 
you know, please join us there and uh, we'll keep you posted on what to do and where we're going. You can also follow us on Saturdays at noon Pacific, three Eastern with the Ask Me Anythings. Uh, and please don't forget to like and share this video on YouTube with others. It will help us grow our community and reach those with ears to hear. Got to give shout outs to Matt Hollis. Matt, my dear friend, thank you so much for being our executive producer and, of course, visionary and our GPS to success, our mentor, Robert Hollis, for being here. And thank you for joining us today on this episode of Unlimited Wisdom. My name is Craig Jackman. Please be good to yourself, be cash, and until next time, bye for now. Thanks, Thank Craig. you, everybody. Dad. Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Dad. Love and appreciate you guys. See you Love next you time. Love you, too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.